So we've completed talking about how pressure varies within the depths of a fluid. Um, let's now talk about how that pressure results in a force on submerged surfaces. This has been broken into two parts. Um, first we're going to talk about planar surfaces, or in other words, flat surfaces. And let's look at a tank of water. And what we're going to look at is what is the force on that red patch of the outside of the container there. So a single flat surface. We know that pressure increases with depth linearly by this equation P equals gamma H. So we can show that with a triangle. The pressure increases with depth um, in a linear fashion. In three dimensions this is actually a, a prism if you look at the dimension coming out of the board. And we can describe this pressure as a pressure prism because it always increases in this triangular fashion. To calculate the resultant force, so we want to turn this distributed force into a single resultant force so it's easier to work with. To calculate that resultant force, we can use the pressure prism and just a little bit of geometry to come up with the volume of that pressure prism. Um, so the resultant force is equal to the average pressure on that surface times the surface area of the surface. Um, if we add some dimensions to this, we can calculate the average pressure as gamma H at the top plus gamma H at the bottom divided by 2. And that gives us the average pressure. We multiply that by the area. And that gives us the resultant force. So this is a simple way you can derive this anytime you need to. Um, a more compact formula and what's provided in the textbook is if we look at the distance from the water surface to the centroid, we call that HC, then the resultant force is simply equal to gamma HCA. And if you play around with that first equation, you can see how the distance to the centroid is H1 plus H2 divided by 2. Okay, so this is the equation that the book provides for the resultant force on a submerged planar surface. Unfortunately, this is not in the FE Handbook. The section on this in the FE Handbook is actually quite terrible, and I, I wouldn't try to figure it out. It's, it's really, really bad. Um, I would I recommend you use this equation, and for quizzes and for the final, I will give you this equation if you need it. Okay, so we use the centroid and the distance to the centroid to calculate the magnitude of the um, resultant force using that equation. Um, however, the force does not act at the centroid. Because the pressure increases with depth, the, that force acts at a distance somewhat lower than the centroid. We call that the center of pressure where that occurs. And we're going to use YR to describe it. YR is the distance from the water surface to the center of pressure. And this is in the direction of the planar surface. To calculate YR, we can use this equation. This is provided in your textbook. Again, it's not in the FE handbook. Or what they have in the FE handbook is similar, but it's, it's a nightmare to use. So anyway, I would use this, and um, I'll give this to you also on quizzes in, in the final if you need it. Um, so YR is that distance to the center of pressure. It uses the moment of inertia, IXC, and YC, the distance from the water surface to the centroid in the direction of the planar surface. Note in this case right here, YC is exactly equal to HC. Um, that moment of inertia, you studied these in dynamics. I'm not going to get into how, where these come from and what they mean. Um, here's a table or a figure from your textbook of some simple shapes in the moment of inertia. For a rectangle, the distance to the centroid is right in the middle of it, and the moment of inertia is BA cubed over 12. For a triangle, this, the distance to the centroid is 2 thirds down, and the moment of inertia is BA cubed over 36. Okay, let's do an example. Let's say we've got a triangular gate on the wall of this tank and there's a hinge along the bottom 
and I want you to tell me what the moment is about that hinge due to the force of, of water pressure pushing on the gate. Okay, so we're going to start first by calculating the magnitude of the force using that equation which we've already derived. First we need to know the distance from the water surface to the centroid of the object. So it's 8 meters to get from the water surface down to the top of the triangle and then to get to the centroid of the triangle it's another two-thirds down which gives us a total of 12 meters. Area of the triangle is uh, one-half the base times the height and now we've got everything we need to solve for the resultant force. It's 2,120 kilonewtons. Now we have to figure out where that force acts. We use that same equation moment of inertia for a triangle we've already looked at this turns out to be 36 meters to the fourth in this case yc is the vertical or, or no yc is the distance from the water surface to the centroid in the direction of the planar surface which in this case is exactly equal to hc now we've got everything to solve for yr it turns out to be 12.167 which as you can see is is just a little bit lower than the centroid of the object. Now to find the moment, we need that moment arm. It's not YR. YR is the distance from the water surface to where the force acts. We need the distance from where the force acts to the hinge, right, to get that proper moment arm. So it's that little red um, distance there. So that turns out to be 14 minus YR and giving us a final answer of 3,890 kilonewton meters. So when you're solving these problems and you have to do a moment, be careful of the geometry. Make sure you visualize exactly what distances you're, you need. Okay, so these are the two equations to calculate force and where it acts on planar submerged surfaces. Um, if, it's, if the surface is vertically oriented, everything I've talked about is in the vertical direction and yc is exactly equal to hc. If it's angled, if that planar surface is not at an angle, this is where things change a little bit and we have to be careful about how you define your variables. hc is still the vertical distance from the centroid to the water surface, but now the y's are both in the direction of the planar surface as well, as well. so they go off at an angle. Also notice that the resultant force always acts perpendicular to the surface, so it's not acting horizontally, it's acting perpendicular to the direction of that surface. Okay, let's do an example of an angled surface. Um, this is a funky gate. It's hinged at the top, and it's heavy enough so that it stays shut unless the water exceeds a certain height, and then the water pressure can push the gate open question is what what should the weight of the gate be if it opens when the water is two feet high so I'll put a bunch of dimensions on here we want to find the weight of the gate right at that point where it starts to open so the depth of the water is two feet above the hinge and we've got uh, some other dimensions for this problem okay let's calculate the magnitude of the force gamma HCA HC is the distance from the centroid of the object to the water surface. Um, we have to use some trigonometry to do this. It's two meters to get down from the water surface to the hinge, and then we have to get halfway down that planar surface, and we have to use angles, or um, we have to use uh, cosine theta to get that vertical component. So that works out to be 2.8 meters. Um, we can now solve for the resultant force, which is 98,000 newtons. Where it acts, we use that equation. And moment of inertia, this is again, this is a rectangle, so we use the, rec the rectangle equation. Um, YC, we need to know it's the distance. Now, this is in the direction of the planar surface from the centroid to the water surface. Again, the trigonometry is a little messy, but to get from the water surface to the hinge, 
we have to use, it's two meters divided by the cosine of theta, and then to get from the hinge to the center of the gate, it's, it's one meter, it's half the total length of the gate. Now we can plug that in, we get a YR of 3.595, which again is a little bit lower than the distance to the centroid. Okay, um, now let's calculate our moments. So we have two forces, the resultant force and the weight. Notice how they both act, the weight is always vertical, the resultant force is always perpendicular to the surface, and they act at different locations, right? They act at the centroid and the center of pressure. Um, we, so we have two moment arms we need. And with the moment arms, we can balance the two moments. Um, the first moment arm, we need to use a little trigonometry for that. The second one, we have some more trigonometry to use. And then we can set up our moment equation and the weight required to hold that gate in place until the depth of two feet is 180 kilonewtons.